Next up, retail investors will undoubtedly move to Bitcoin, says Fidelity. Oh, really? So let's see what they got. Fidelity Digital Assets, if you don't know, it is their uh, sister arm of their main entity, which is Fidelity, which has a paltry $8 trillion, trillion with a T, assets under management. And according to the report that they put out, which is looks like this, and we'll go over that in a second, uh, the report says social media and communication platforms, including Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok, are driving the real adoption of Bitcoin, which is interesting. Think about that. Where do you get your information? Do you sit down and watch news on the big three channels or, you know, maybe on cable? Or do you get a lot of your news from some of these outside sources, which would be like social media platforms like YouTube, like listening to it right now, like maybe on Twitter or maybe on some other format, Reddit or whatever you want to say. So it is interesting that they lay this out. And the reason why they lay it out, and first of all, they're right, is because of this. They disassemble or disseminate financial information and advice in a more viral and rapid way than traditional channels. Think about that. Again, of course we do. I do. Other players in the YouTube space do. People on Twitter do. There's so much information out there and it happens in the blink of an eye. So to actually put it on a news channel, to get it all together, to have it all fact-checked, to look at everything, and then go for it, and then actually put it out there, it takes a lot of time. But with social media and what we do right here, first of all, I'm not beholden to anybody, which is great. There's no corporation over me going, you can say this, but you can't say that, you can't say that. So I am as free as I possibly want to be. And I know YouTube has its problems, but it does give me a platform and a voice, and for that, I'm grateful. And I will say this, I truly believe that social media does move and sway the markets. We've seen it time and time again, and that's why there's that age-old adage, which is buy the rumor, sell the news. And there's tons of rumors out there, and there's tons of gossip, and there's tons of things going on, and I believe it pushes the market in one way or the other. Moving on, as this new wave of retail investors familiarize themselves with these channels, some of their attention will undoubtedly flow to Bitcoin or digital assets, the report states, which makes a lot of sense. How much of the mainstream media really covers Bitcoin? really covers Ethereum, really covers tomato coin or whatever it is. You know what I mean? That doesn't really exist. Only exists pretty much primarily right here. The Daily Digital Asset was careful to note that the narratives for retail speculators are very different. Bitcoin is reflexive, suggests the report. Price and sentiment experience a self reinforcing effect. And to continue, the authors pointed data from the Thai, a sentiment analysis firm, illustrating that abnormally high mentions of Bitcoin on social media can drive increases in the value of the digital currency. Of course it does. Of course it does. You have to understand with, uh, I've been in sales and marketing for years and years, and it's the it's a, it's a fact that people buy an emotion and they back up their buying decision on facts. It's the same way like when you go into a car dealership, it's not like you have a ton of facts in your head. I mean, you may have a little bit, but there's an old, another old phrase, which goes like this, the feel of the wheel seals the deal. And what that means is when you get into a car, that's why they're always trying to get you into that test drive because they know when you sit in one of these high end, or even it doesn't matter what it is, uh, any kind of vehicle, and you start to really just get into it, the emotions take over. You're like, oh, it feels very nice. Oh, this is very smooth. I like how this feels. Oh, I can, you know, there's a ton of room in here, or whatever it is, or it's very fast, or whatever the car that you is. So they want to do that because your emotions will drive some of your purchasing. And that's why this market is built on FOMO, because a lot of people will do that. Now, you watching uh, this video right now, I can tell you right now, you probably don't do much of that because you listen to what's going on around you. Not only that, you're not here during this during a massive bull run. In 2017, of course, everybody was out there buying up things, and those are the people that were FOMOing and really spending on emotion. Here, it's a much different place. Like, if we can just take a look at what is going on, it's sideways. Everything, there's not really much going on. And this is where all the money is made. When it's boring and nothing's going on and you're disciplined enough to dollar cost or average and buy in, you are an investor. So when everything goes to the moon, that's not when the money's really made. It's made right now. This is planting the seed, harvest all the fruits of your labor. So uh, just keep doing what you're doing and things usually work out pretty well. So finishing up, states... What is unique about Bitcoin is that it's retail driven financial media and the way people consume investment information is changing and influencers command more attention than institutions. Let me read that one more time. Influencers command more attention than institutions. So that's the thing. 
on this channel, I started this channel about 10 months ago. And the reason I did it was just to have an outlet. My business is pretty much run by themselves. I don't really need to do too much. So I can have a lot of free time. My wife's like, why don't you do something? <laughs> That's why she's always kicking me out. And I'm always in the uh, in, in the pool room. But a, a funny thing came, came about as time went on. And one of those things was I realized how important it is to get things right. And to not fall into victim of talking about the next shiny object. It just, it doesn't work out. Now, other, other places can, other people can. But one of the lessons that I learned being around 2017 is that you cannot be one of those people who talks about an ICO and, you know, not really even do a lot of research. And then people, you know, FOMO into it because of what you said. And then all of a sudden they're, they're like, hey, hey, man, I just lost all my money because of you. What? What the hell happened? And we always talk about doing your own research. And of course, yes, it is up to you. However, words carry weight. And it's why on this channel, I'm probably one of the more reserved or conservative uh, type of people out there. I don't trade. I don't do TA. I definitely don't do leverage trading. That's crazy to me. I just invest. I just dollar cost average. And that's all I got. It's boring. It's not really too exciting. I know. But again, I think that all this sideways action right here, this is when all the money's made. And when dips happen, that's also another opportunity. And it gets to be monotonous sometimes and boring, but that's how things are built. It doesn't happen overnight. So yeah, even the products that I talk about on my channel are pretty boring if you think about it. I mean, one was uh, Stonebook, which is just, it's a, it's a book. It's a thing that you use to write down your seed phrase and, and mnemonic phrases. It's That's pretty boring. CryptoTrader.tax, I talk about that sometimes because I know people have to use their taxes or do their taxes. And I think it's important that they do those taxes. Again, boring. And the other thing is I trust capital uh, because I think that everybody should, you know, get into an IRA in some way, shape or form because I think at some point, you know, uh, you're going to have to pay a ton of taxes on these gains, so you might as well prepare for the future now. That's it. That's really all I got. So anyhow, this is this is what all comes down to, which was the actual report. And I'm just going to, uh, there's two little snippets that I wanted to add in there, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it goes like this. In 2003, alternative investments comprised 6% or $4.8 trillion of the global investable markets, according to the CAIA Association. Yeah. Uh, this association estimates that alternative investments grew to 13 trillion by the end of 2018. That's like a 3x from 4.8 to 13.4. That's pretty good. Or 12% of the global investable market due to factors such as low interest rates, pension funding ratios, which is going to be a nightmare coming up, the maturation of emerging markets, and a structural shift in capital formation. Members expect alternative investments such as Bitcoin, cryptocurrency digital assets, on top of others to grow to 18 to 24 percent of the market by 2025 so imagine that and this is just in alternative investments if you if you've been around the channel for a while you know i love this uh, little chart that i have comparing the, the money of all uh, in the whole world you can take this little square right here it's 100 billion right this is silver at 43 billion here's crypto at 340 something billion military spending budget deficit coins and banknotes fed's balance sheet which is uh, way higher now here's all the billionaires here's all the gold in the world about you know uh, 10 trillion of that so just imagine first of all if uh, bitcoin takes i don't know a quarter of that let's just say 10 percent. that's a trillion dollars that's a trillion dollars just from taking it from gold uh fortune 500 here's the uh 25% of the S&P 500, matter of fact. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google, Facebook. Uh, stock exchange, 89 trillion. Money supply, 95 trillion. Global debt, guess what? There's more, 253 trillion. Uh, global real estate, 280 trillion. So when people start talking about tokenizing uh, real estate and condos and skyscrapers, watch out because this is part of that. And then you've also got the global wealth, 360 trillion. Derivatives, 558 trillion for what we know, and then maybe a, quadri a quadrillion because <laughs> we don't really don't really know exactly how much it is. So all of that, all of this, and we are stuck, or we are sitting, I shouldn't say stuck, right here with cryptocurrency. This is the biggest asymmetrical investment opportunity you're ever going to see in your lifetime. That's just my opinion, though. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.